President, I promise you, I will get these weapons of war off the street again. I'm in favor of no gun control whatsoever. My three favorite guns, uh, personally, and then probably for the whole United States of America, would be a Glock 19, an AR-15 pistol. This one's chambered in 300 blackout, and then a Remington 870 shotgun. We're going to shoot these three. Uh, we'll put a couple rounds through, kind of see how they function a little differently, and go from there. I'm going to shoot the Glock 19 first. It's a nine millimeter, made in Austria as well as the United States here in Georgia. Um, one of my favorite pistols. <laughs> AR-15 pistol. This one's made by Wilson Combat. Um, definitely one of my favorites. Big bullet, lots of energy, good for hunting, great for home defense. Then last is a Remington 870 pump shotgun. Um, lots of law enforcement, military, both use this, this, this shotgun just for its reliability, ease of use. You can see why those are probably pretty effective. You know, you've got the, your shotgun pattern, the 300 blackout pattern from the AR. My shot group with the nine millimeter was, was in there as well. So all three very effective firearms and multiple, multiple purposes, hunting, recreation, and personal protection. People in Georgia have a very healthy respect for guns. We believe that you should be able to own them. We don't think that you should be forced to own them. But we don't believe that the government should have the right to tell you that you can't own them. We believe that you have the right to defend yourself and protect your life and property at any time you want to or need to. To, to gun owners out there who say, well, a Biden administration means they're going to come for my guns. Bingo. You're right if you have an assault weapon. The fact of the matter is they should be illegal, period. Look, the Second Amendment doesn't say you can't restrict the kinds of weapons people can own. You can't buy a bazooka. You can't have a flamethrower. The guys who make these arguments are the people who say the tree of liberty is water with the blood of patriots. We need the protection against the government. We need an F-15 for that. We've seen from history what happens when only the government has guns, uh, and it's not good for the citizens. The, the governments have killed more people than any of the citizens could ever do. This one is a, a little five-shot revolver. It's a Ruger SP-101. It's a 357 Magnum, which is a fairly powerful handgun. Well, I rarely ever leave the house without my gun, even though I may go somewhere where I can't carry it. I will take it and I'll, I'll lock it in, the, in one of the compartments in the back of my truck. It's just like putting on my pants or my boots or anything else in the morning. It's part of my dress. We encourage our citizens to arm themselves for self-preservation. Uh, we can't be everywhere all the time. Uh, so if you're legally able to carry or own a weapon, we encourage you to buy a weapon. We offer gun safety courses here for the general public, 
And uh, we teach them about the gun laws. We teach them how to handle their weapon, how to clean the weapons. Uh, and we try to be smart about gun ownership. And if you're going to own a weapon, we expect you to be able to use it correctly and safely. This is where we do our Citizens Firearms Fundamentals class. This was in Atlanta. Uh, you see these guys come, come in. You see this gentleman has a gun here. Uh, they're, they're running through the house looking for something particular. This is not just the crime of opportunity here, but what you'll see here in a minute is they don't realize the homeowners are home. These home invaders uh, were essentially met with resistance from the homeowner. And you see the lady back here starts shooting at them and they're running out of the house. So Georgia has a stand your ground law. And what that means is if you are in your house you don't have a duty to retreat. They can argue they were reasonably in fear of their life. And so the, the use of the firearm here, that use of deadly force, is considered reasonable. The, the deputy that was driving this is come from the Chevrolet Tahoe. Um, he had made a traffic stop and the passenger uh, had some outstanding warrants and so the passenger of the vehicle he had pulled over just jumped out of the car and took off running. Well, in the midst of him running, started shooting back at the deputy's Tahoe. And, and you can see um, there was one bullet that hit the fender well up here. And this was the second bullet, but it didn't make it through. Um, you had the third bullet that hit and then another bullet down at the bottom. But the deputy was fine. He didn't get any injuries or anything like that. Um, unfortunately, it ended up in a, a shootout with this gentleman and he ended up being shot and killed. But this is a, we have it up here as just a, a reminder of what can go wrong, but it was a very lucky incident for this officer. We have people that come to the academy that are avid shooters. They've been shooting their whole life. Shooting is nothing new to them. And we also have people that come to the academy that have never shot a gun before in their life uh, and decided to get into law enforcement for, for whatever reasons. Uh, so this is just the standard uh, run-of-the-mill AR-15 platform. Nothing special to it. It's a uh, just a semi-automatic rifle with a 30 round magazine and just a simple red dot sight on it uh, with a flashlight, adjustable stock. Uh, for the most part, this is what all of our guys, just about all of our guys on patrol have. Um, obviously with a, a 223 or a 5.56 is a much more superior round than the nine millimeter. But the other benefits to it is, there's a lot more stopping power, but we don't have, we don't run the is risk so much of an over penetration uh, with a 556 as we, you would see with a nine millimeter. So even though it is a, a more powerful, powerful round, it's a safer round. This is gonna be your um, standard duty sidearm. Um, we have a mix of Glocks and Smith and Wessons as well, the Smith and Wesson 2.0. Um, for the most part, we all run lights on them just because it frees up one hand. And obviously the red dot sight is something we're integrating into uh, patrol use. Uh, these are Glock 17s, has a, has a nine millimeter with a uh, 17 round magazine. So we'll shoot it as well today. So this is our, our standard AR-15. Uh, it's a very accurate weapon. We find also that our deputies shoot it more accurately because when you fire this weapon, there's four points of contact versus two points of contact with a pistol. Uh, you have this hand, obviously this hand, and then you shoulder the weapon, and then you have your cheek on the weapon. So you have one, two, three, four points of contact versus with a pistol, you just have one hand and the other hand, two points of contact. So it's, it's easier to acquire the sights and shoot it more accurately. So I'll charge it, I'll check it, make sure it's ready to go and uh, we'll shoot it.
that simple. Um, like I said, it's, it, you find that the guys prefer this weapon a lot more because it's far more accurate, a lot easier to shoot. Um, so you can sling it when necessary. Um, if you need both hands available to do whatever it is. Now, as far as our pistols go, um, we'll shoot some rounds with the pistol. So what you'll see here is, is, is we don't have all of our bullets in one hole, but that's okay. As law enforcement officers, we don't shoot to kill. Uh, we shoot to stop the threat. And these, all of these rounds here would have stopped whatever threat this is. Uh, sometimes if the end result is maybe someone being killed, then that's just the end result of it. And that is what it took to stop the threat of, of whatever was going on. Um, I shot this from, from 10 yards. And what we find in most officer-involved shootings, they occur between seven and five yards, and generally at nighttime. And so we train our officers to shoot all the way from 25 yards, but the large majority of our uh, qualification course is done at the seven-yard line. Coming from Joe Biden, nothing is going to be well-received here, but it still has to be done. Uh, we have a united country in a federal system where but with a patchwork of gun safety laws and that allows a lot of the crime and a lot of the problems we see uh, illinois has very strict gun laws but when you can drive 30 minutes over to indiana and get whatever you want and then come back to illinois those laws aren't effective we need a federal system uh, we have reciprocity with concealed carry in a lot of states, it's time to have that same level of reciprocity as far as safety restrictions and regulations and making sure that these weapons are safe, they're employed safely, and that people who have them are responsible for them. I've beaten the National Rifle Association nationally twice, passed meaningful gun legislation at a federal level, and I'll do it again. But it won't just be because I'll do it. It's because moms against gun violence are now mobilized. Young victims, school children across the country are mobilized, pricking the conscience of everybody out there who says my thoughts and prayers are with you. The Democratic Party in the United States, if they don't like something, they think that you shouldn't be able to get it. They don't like guns, so they want to ban guns. Gun control is not about guns, it's about control. The reason for the Second Amendment was to protect the citizens from a tyrannical government. If they get the guns away from the people, then they will have complete control of the public. And that's what it's all about. The Second Amendment, of course, uh, everybody loves quoting the second half of it. Nobody likes remembering the first half, that it's the well-regulated militia that's essential to the state. Uh, if you want to join the well-regulated militia, I can point you to a recruiter. I will help you. We need people in the Army, in the Navy, in the Marine Corps, in the Air Force uh, to come do things. But that's part of that regulation is what brings us safety. Um, you know, and that's the thing. It wasn't a uh, design for private ownership of cannons when it was invented. It was the ability of the colonists to join their local militias, which was their army because there wasn't a federal system. In this country, we do not have a bill of needs, we have a bill of rights. And I have the right to own whatever I want to own. Uh, it's the same thing to me as uh, you can buy a car that can do 180 miles an hour, but we don't have a highway in this country that you can legally drive 180 miles an hour. So why would you want one? Well, because it's my right to own one if I want to. The sanctuary counties just, uh, really affect that particular county and what they've said is that that they're not going to enforce any gun control laws anything that they feel is an infringement on our constitutional right uh, they're not going to enforce it you know the sheriff of, of any county in Georgia and, and actually anywhere in the United States is the highest elected official in that county he doesn't have to enforce any law that he doesn't want to enforce and that's what will happen in, in most of those counties anyway, is the sheriff's just not going to enforce it. Uh, the sheriff is a constitutional office. So one of the duties that we're required to enforce is protect the Constitution of the United States. 
So if any law is enacted that's contrary to the Constitution of the United States, which the Second Amendment is part of the Constitution, we can fight against any violations of the Constitution, and we will stop federal agents from coming in to our county enforcing laws that are unconstitutional. It's a duty by the Constitution for us to uphold the Constitution of the United States. So we will fight against any opposition to the Constitution.